Welcome back to Susan's Craft. In this segment, we're going to look at some of the basic characteristics of a sewing machine that you might like to see in your sewing machine for your quilting projects. Now you don't really need to buy an expensive sewing machine when you're starting out. If you've just got a very basic one with your basic range of stitches, that is more than satisfactory. This one here only has a range of about five stitches and I find that's very accommodating for what I do with all my patchwork projects. Now some of the characteristics I like about a basic machine is that with the different types of thread, it's got a good thread holder. You need to remember that when you're threading your machine, you always need to have your foot of your sewing machine up because otherwise when it's down, the clamps that control your top tension in here will grab hold of your thread. So you need, always need to have your uh, foot up when you're threading your sewing machine. You need to be aware of whether your sewing machine being a basic or an electronic, what type of bobbin, because often with a more electronic one or computerized sewing machine, you can only use plastic bobbins. So do be aware of that with your sewing machine. If you're going to be doing more extensive quilting, like free motion quilting, you need to be able to have the facility where you can actually drop your feed dogs. Now, what are your feed dogs, you might ask? What we'll do is we'll just take the sample away. Your feed dogs are the little grippy teeth down underneath here, and they actually grip the fabric when you lower your foot down and help the fabric to feed through. So to stop that, and so you can move your fabric very freely, you can switch it so your feed dogs actually drop down. Now also, what is a good thing to have a look at as well, is your bobbin. Bobbin's in here. Let me just take it out. Now one of the characteristics of the bobbin is that it has a very tiny screw here. Don't adjust this unless you're really expert at doing free motion machine embroidery and you're familiar with the bobbin. To loosen it means you're going to lose your bottom tension and it's quite hard to get it back to normality. So if you want to play around with your bobbin and do some of the fantastic creative stitches that can occur by loosening your bobbin, do think about getting another bobbin case and have a play around with that and keep one, the other one, for doing your normal work. Now we'll just pop that back in. We'll just leave it to the side. Um, also, the, with the threads, it's a good idea to buy the threads where you can actually pull out the bottom part of your threads because that means rather than having lots of tangles as you store them away, you can actually wind them around the base of the spool holder and close them off and you've got them nice and secure. Also, when you're sewing, your machine needle, you need to be aware that you need to change your sewing machine needle every eight hours or at the end of every project, whichever comes first, because you'll find after using that same needle for quite a long time, you'll get scrags in your fabric as you sew. When you buy sewing machine needles, you might have noticed they come in different sizes. The smaller size, the 70, is often used for your finer fabrics, going up to your 90, which is used for things like your denim fabrics. You might come across something called a ballpoint needle. That is a sewing machine needle that's round. It's not as pointy as your normal sewing ones. And that's used for your stretch fabrics. And it means that it actually pushes the fibers aside as it's sewing rather than piercing down. Because with stretch fabric, if you use a normal needle and pierce down, you're gonna get lots of tiny little holes. Another thing that you might like to consider adding to your sewing machine is a walking foot. A walking foot is great when you want to just do straight stitches and quilting. As you can notice with this sample here, we've got about eight layers of fabric and the sewing machine's gone through it very easily with the attachment of the walking foot. We can look at the back and see that the tension has been maintained. So it might be a good idea. You might like to invest in one of those as well. Also, I find as I have needles and pins that are um, damaged and past their use by time, I keep them in a solid container like a sharps container and that keeps them safe and then when it's full I can just dispose of it. 
Most machines will come with their own accessories, so you'll get a variety of accessories. You'll notice in your little case that you'll have a open-toed darning foot. They're great for when you do your free motion machine embroidery. Some people do free motion machine embroidery without a foot, but you need to be quite experienced to do that because it will be quite easy for the needle at a very fast pace to go through your fingers and that's something you really don't want. You'll also have oil in your little um, accessories box. Look at your instruction manual and that'll tell you where you need to oil and how often you need to oil. A lot of people, when they clean underneath their machine, often a lot of dust collects underneath. You really should use the fine little brush that is supplied. If you start blowing into it, the moisture from all your, your breath will gradually over time build up and rust the inside of your sewing machine. So they're just a few pointers that you might like to keep in mind when you're operating your sewing machine or you're actually looking to buy a sewing machine. And do remember for further information about this, do refer to our blog and that will keep you up to date with all the latest tips and techniques. After the break, we're going to come back and we're going to look at how to construct a Dresden plate. A Dresden plate is a patchwork block that was devised in the 1930s as a way of using up a lot of scrap fabrics. And one of the great ideas that we'll come across and discuss is how to trace your paper pattern onto template plastic. So do stay tuned and do remember, for further information about all the techniques that we've utilised, you can go to our blog.